Hi, I am Vidushi and you are watching Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper analysis from the UPSC perspective. So today we have taken up important articles from three main sources, the Hindu, the Indian Express and the Business Line. So today we have two topics for the mains and five topics for the prelims. So first for the mains is prevention of Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. Second discussion will have on performance linked incentive approach for toy sector. And for prelims, we'll have practice question on judicial custody, voter verifiable paper audit trail that is VVPAT, then ozone on Jupiter's moon. Then we have next practice question on mustard. And last, We'll end our session with a question on import and export scenario in the defense sector. Now, before moving on, if you like our initiative, please do like, share and subscribe our video. And uh, here we have an important announcement for you all. See the ever evolving geopolitical uh, affair or uh, realities. You can go through perspective. To give you an insight on those perspectives, Rouse came up with second edition of PSIR Current Affairs magazines for the March month. That you can have it on our official portal as well as we have given the link in our description box. So go and check it out. So now let's start our session. So the first discussion we have on this news article which appeared on page number 6 in the Hindu newspaper. Context is that in the uh, alleged excise policy scam in Delhi, ED claims that Arvind Kejriwal is liable uh, for the offense of money laundering. And with that, it results in Aam Admi Party being subsequently prosecuted as an accused in the case. And in that case, ED can attach the uh, political party asset as per the provision of money Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. Okay. So, this is the context. Now, the question comes why we have taken. Because here in this discussion, we will talk about Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. So, you can see here government policies and intervention in various sectors is important theme in GS Paper 2. Also, in this discussion, we will talk about money laundering, which is another important theme in your GS Paper 3. Okay. Now, it is also important from the exam point of view because UPSC has been asking question on this theme. There was a question on how money, laundry, uh, money laundering poses a serious threat to the country's economic sovereignty. And here, you need to provide significance for India and steps to be taken. This question came in 2013. There was a question on interconnecting between drug trafficking, other illicit activities such as gun running, money laundering and human trafficking. This question came in 2018. And in 2021, again question came on same theme, based on how emerging technologies and globalization contribute to money laundering. Okay. And here you need to write down the measures to tackle the problem. So this theme is quite important from the UPSC perspective. So let's start our discussion with the term what is money laundering? The money laundering is a process that is used by criminal to hide the illegal source of their money. Okay, and this they do by passing money through complex transactions, various transactions by series of business activities. And the ultimate aim is that money is cleaned of its illegitimate origin and made it appear as legitimate business profit. So, in crux, you can understand that this is a process to convert illegitimate money into a legitimate one. Okay. So, here you can go through this definition of money laundering. Now, the next question is that why it happens? See, the large organized crimes like drug smuggling operations. So what happened, these operations, they end up creating huge amount of cash. Okay. Now to avoid attracting uh, 
scrutiny by legal entities and to avoid uh, tax liabilities they try to conceal such a huge amount of cash by creating various ways of laundering money basically to obscure illegal nature of its source okay then only they can convert illegitimate money to legitimate one na? got it so basically to avoid uh, uh, investigation agencies and to avoid uh, tax liabilities they basically obscure illegal nature of its source okay now this is why it happens next is how it happens process involved in money laundering and it entails three phases as you can see in this diagram the first is placement second is layering and third is integration so in first phase it is the initial attempt so in this amount from criminal activities it will be placed in a legal financial institution okay so here amount from illegal activities will be moved to legal financial institution and this process is known as placement okay now money is in the system now the next task is to obscure illegal nature of its source that is layering and how it will be done it will be done by involving complex transactions by creating uh, shell companies by moving fund between different accounts okay as you can see here payment by x of false invoice to company x then transfer to the bank account of company x then loan to company by so by uh, wrapping different complex transactions this is done basically to uh, virtually make it impossible to trace back its illegal origin okay that is the sole task and this process is known as layering to obscure or to hide illegal nature of its source now once this money is converted into a legal one next is to utilize this money freely in a legal way and this can be done with the help of purchasing uh, luxury assets financial investments commercial and industrial investments so in this process you utilize that money freely or legally okay and this third process is known as integration now that money is part of the legal system got it so how illegitimate amount converted into the legitimate am amount and it wrapped up three uh, phase uh, placing layering and integration okay now the next question is different methods of money laundering you must have heard about hawala round tripping what is round tripping round tripping is when money leaves country through various channel suppose country a so money leaves country through various channel and makes its way back to country a from country b as a part of foreign investment this is round tripping then by creating just now we have seen shell companies got it then gambling real estate investment then by creating face invoicing so these are the different methods of money laundering okay now the next is its impact obviously we are converting legitimate uh, illegitimate money into legitimate one definitely it will have adverse impact on economic front social front security front so let's see its impact on economic front definitely it will impact the revenue of a country how because of tax and duty evasion and this will also affect the credible governance system adversely so this is economic impact second is social because here criminal assumes huge gunpowder as or you can say fire powder as their at their disposal and which will give rise to their illegal activities like increase in drug addiction rampant corruption also in this process uh, criminals they will assume economical as well as political power because of source of money they have plenty of money so they will assume political as well as economical power which is not good for the society or for the nation so this is social impact 
नेक्स्ट इज सिक्योरिटी डेफिनेटली इट विल पोज अ थ्रेट टू सोवर्निटी एज वेल एज स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ अ नेशन बाय रनिंग अ पैल गवर्नमेंट I guess you you all must have heard about drug lord Pablo Escobar. He run a parallel government in nineteen eighties and nineteen nine in nineteen nineties in Colombia by running a parallel government. So by running a parallel government, he pose a threat to sovereignty or stability of Colombia nation. So security impact is also there. so these are the different impact of money laundering now having seen what is money laundering how it happens why it happens different methods and its impact now let's move to prevention of money laundering act 2002 so let's start with the genesis of prevention of money laundering act 2002 see in 1980s there was a global uh, consensus that we, there is a need to curb black money coming from flourishing drug trade why because somewhere uh, it can destabilize the world economy and it also pose a threat to sovereignty as well as stability of various nation so there was a global consensus to bring out some kind of a, a convention or legislation to curb black money coming from illegal drug trade So for that reason, in nineteen eighty eight, United Nations came with a convention that uh, against illicit traffic in narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances. Okay, so it all started with United Nations convention. Then in year nineteen eighty nine, many industrial nation they held a summit in Paris, and uh, there they finalized financial or they. established financial action task force fatf where, whose aim is basically to examine money laundering and to bring out different ways to solve this problem then in 1990 united nation came with a resolution on political declaration and global program of action so basically here Uh, this resolution call upon different members to enact legislation to prevent or uh, to prevent laundering of money drug money basically and in 1990 1998 as you know that uh, drug is a transporter operation for that reason united nation held a special session in 1998 on the theme countering world drug problem together and because of a uh, un convention and fatf recommendation we got our indian government enacted prevention of money laundering act 2002 which came in force in year 2005 okay for what to curb black money coming from illegal drug trade so its objective is to prevent money laundering to combat or prevent channelizing of money into illegal activities also it enable indian government that government can confiscate property derived from or used in money laundering that's why in context i uh, mentioned that uh, ed can attach uh, political party assets in this case okay that is aap assets then these are the different objectives of prevention of money laundering act 2002 now let's see the offenses part keep a tab on this part because then only you can understand the next part that is problems associated with prevention of money laundering act and ed so to understand that first you need to know basics about offenses involved in this act so here we can see that three part are there part a part b and part c so part a in list offenses under various acts such as indian penal code narcotics drugs and psychotropic substance act prevention of corruption act antiquities and art treasures act copyright act trademark act wildlife protection act and information technology act so these are the different acts under part a now come to part b this uh, part uh having offenses of part a 
but that value involved more than 1 crore okay then part c deals with trans border crimes okay so different parts under pmla act now we know the genesis of uh, pmla is from united nation convention and fatf recommendation purpose just now we have seen it purpose is to curtail black money coming from drug trafficking that is the main task of pmla but author according to author pmla this act not in line with its original purpose why because different it this act includes last last number of provisions and they have nothing to do with drug money see here all these acts like trademark act wildlife protection act information technology act copyright act all these act have nothing to do with drug money yes and that is the reason why according to author this act not in line with the original purpose that is to combat the laundering of drug money so this is the first key takeaway second is bloated law see pmla was enacted by parliament under article 253 this enables it to deal with international conventions subjected to drug money okay under this article but what happens because of various amendments various amend amendments have bloated the schedule of this act that is pmla act it involved different offenses from general to offenses one uh, uh, special one it involved general offenses that are part of indian penal code and it also involved special offenses for that we have special laws for example prevention of corruption act 1988 so by addition of this act what is the purpose of this act to curb cor uh, corruption among public servants this is the sole aim of prevention of corruption act 1988 so by addition of this act in pmla what we have done we have done see we have placed public servant charged with corruption sitting on the same pedestal with hardcore drug trafficker okay so because of the inclusion of this act in pmla we have made a public uh, servant charged with corruption sitting on same pedestal with drug hardcore drug trafficker and they will be treated alike so this is another problem with this act second is it is contrary to fundamentals of jurisprudence see the you can say a very disturbing thing with this act is that here accused under this law assumed to be guilty until proved innocent okay here accused to be assumed guilty until proved innocent which is in contrary to anglo saxon jurisprudence that person is pres uh, presumed innocent until proven guilty so here pmla turns this fundamental principle upside down and this is first problem second problem is here an accused will be denied bail by the court because of the provision of this act and this provision says that a judge uh, can give bail to the accused only if he is satisfied that the accused is innocent so here the in this case judge can give bail to accused only if he is satisfied that this accused is innocent now you tell me uh, which judge will take such a risk difficult and that is the reason why a uh, accused will spend a long time period in jail without trial so this is another issue that is contrary to fundamentals of jurisprudence another issue author highlighted with the uh, methodology challenges associated with the methodologies of enforcement directorate and the first issue is non disclosure of enforcement case information report 
so ed does not close uh, disclose enforcement case information report that is similar to fir and this amounts to denial basic rights of knowledge to the accused also accused is called upon to make statements which are treated as admissible in evidence okay another issue is that accused doesn't even know the kind of uh, allegation posed against him how he will fight so another issue with the methodology of ed is non disclosure of enforcement case information report then it is also alleged that majority of the actions of ed uh, they are based on the uh, affirmations from the central government that means they are politically motivated so this is another concern shared by the author in this article so these are the different or important key ta uh, key takeaways from this article and uh, these uh, takeaways they are associated with problems with prevention of money laundering act and enforcement directorate okay so now let's move to our next discussion which is based on this news article that appeared on page number 4 in the business line context is that government is looking to bring performance linked incentive for toy industry okay i guess you all of you remember this performance link uh, incentive uh, bought by the government in 2020s to boost domestic manufacturing sector and in this government offer incentives to eligible firms on increment their incremental growth for 5 years which are which is a part of make in india yes now the question is that why we have taken because effects of liberalization on the economy changes in industrial policy and their effect on industrial growth is important theme under gs paper 3 so here we will see why there is need for a um, need of pli for toy sector or toy industry and challenges associated with this industry in current scenario so why there is need because it will reduce import dependence the for crucial ingredients like electronic parts plastic parts fabric we are heavily dependent on china or asian countries so with this pli in in pli incentive uh, it will incentivize our domestic production yes it will bring down our production costs it will reduce our import and it will balance out our trade deficit so first is it will reduce import dependence second is it will strengthen supply chain yes by see all these uh, wrapping up uh, crucial raw materials and machinery with the pli we can bolster our supply chain for the future so again this will increase our production we will make more quality products and this will provide a scope for innovation also okay second is another uh, need a pli scheme for toy sector is there is absence of bigger firms so this toy market in india is quite fragmented is basically it composed of small and medium size firms or enterprises majorly we have small and medium size firm so these firms they often lack capital which is quite important to scale up their production or to bring more competitive product in the uh, global market so with pli pli can support this uh, small uh, medium size in enterprises or industries so that they can scale up their production they can bring out more competitive products in the market yes so currently we have absence of bigger firms with this we can get a small and medium size enterprises now we do have certain challenges associated with it, this industry so to make it more successful we need to address these challenges for a better growth so first is lack of skilled manpower see the requirement of skill in this industry vary from precision of handmade toy to 
do skill cutting and tailoring needs and still this uh, industry the nature of this industry has changed a lot in a past decade and the kind of skill we need in this sector india currently lacking on those skills so there is a lack of skilled manpower and we need to work on more on skill second is there is absence of testing infrastructure in india we don't have appropriate testing infrastructure to uh, which can provide a ecosystem to manufacture more quality products also each toy has its specific testing mechanism but these small and medium sized enterprises they don't have that much money how they will spend it will be very costly for them so uh, it is a problem to own and use for single purpose or individually so there is absence of testing infrastructure or uh, infrastructure to ensure quality of products then inadequate research and designing support see this industry could benefit greatly from a network of institutions uh, catering research and design and support in this sector okay because it will boost the quality it will ensure more stability then setting up a toy clusters by uh, establishing concentrated uh, toy region or regions of toy manufacturing we can bring down our production cost and we can increase our production and uh, these clusters they have potential to become large scale manufacturing hub okay if we provide necessary infrastructure and support system so these are the challenges associated with this industry so pli scheme in crux uh, for toy industry should recognize needs of all segments of society of this industry and all the stages of production to strengthen this industry okay so that's all from our main point of view now let's come to our prelim series so the first question we have taken up here is based on this news article which appear on page number 2 in the hindu newspaper context is that mr uh, delhi chief minister mr arvind kejriwal has been sent to 15 days uh, judicial custody in delhi excise policy case okay now why we have taken this article because upsc has been asking of lately question based on a uh, custody fir okay as you can see here there was a question based on judicial custody in year 2022 so now let's start see the word custody first you need to understand the meaning of word custody here the word custody means apprehending someone let me write it here for you apprehending someone for protective care that is the literal meaning of custody and the basic principle behind this is arresting or uh, arresting the suspect of a crime to save other in a society from that accused this is a fundamental principle so here we have two terms police custody and judicial custody now what is police custody as name goes this is a situation when police arrest and hold a suspect at a police station which is based on fir or complaint against him okay and this is done so that that accused can be stopped from committing any further illegal activities that is police custody another is judicial custody this is in which accused this is accused is in the custody of concerned concerned magistrate okay so this is the basic about police custody and judicial custody now let's see the differences between the two before solving this question based on judicial custody so police custody have the physical custody of the accused and in judicial accused is in the custody of the concerned magistrate here 
he will be lodged in lockup and here he will be lodged in jail so arvind kejriwal is in jail and here the person lodged in police custody has to appear before the concerned magistrate within 24 hours okay but on a contrary part for detail in judicial custody is kept in jail until court gives bail so here court need to give bail and here within 24 hours that accused need to be present before the magistrate then police custody begins when police officer as i told you arrest the suspect based on complaint or fir and judicial custody public prosecutor need to satisfy the court that for the purpose of investigation custody of such accused is necessary okay maximum period of police custody is 24 hours and which may be extended to 15 days maximum period of detention of judicial custody is 90 days where offense related or punishable with death imprisonment for life and uh, imprisonment for a term not less than 10 years and 60 days for those offenses were punishable imprisonment for a term less than 10 years so 90 for more than 10 years and 60 for less than 10 years now let's solve our practice question based on this info a person lodged in police custody must be presented before the concerned magistrate within 48 hours no within 24 hours so this makes our first statement incorrect second statement associated with judicial custody that the maximum period of detention in case of judicial custody is 90 days this is true for cases where offense punishable is more than like 10 years so maximum period of detention is 90 days so this statement is correct so our answer is option b two only now let's come to our next question which is based on this news article which appeared on page number 12 here supreme court issued a notice to election commission on petition calling for counting of all vv pat count that is voter verified uh, audit uh, voter verified paper audit trail paper slips in election now upsc has been asking question based on election like in year 2017 there was a question based on this theme so here we have taken a practice question based on vv pat before that you need to know basics about vv pat as you can see in this image vv pat is an independent system attached with evm that is electronic voting machine and this system basically it allows voters to verify their votes uh, their vote and uh, they can verify that their vote, uh, votes are cast as intended okay so the process is once the vote is cast a slip is printed that contains serial number name and symbol of the candidate and uh, that will be exposed through a transparent window for 7 seconds okay for 7 seconds you can see for whom you have voted now after that this uh, printed slip will automatically cuts and fall into a sealed vv pat box okay that this is the procedure and uh, there is a petition in supreme court that ec should count all these slips okay now let's solve a question first statement is vv pat are mandatory to be attached with all evm yes it is an essential part and it uh, they need to be attached with all the evms so first statement is correct second statement is that vv pat paper slips are only for voters to verify their votes but not counted now this statement is incorrect why because presently vv pats are counted in a limited sense but they do counted and election totally dependent on evm so mandatory verification of vv pat slip is done under general and by election to state legislative assembly 
Here verification of VVPAT slip is done randomly. Selected five polling station. Same with Lok Sabha. So mandatory counting takes place after last round of counting of votes. Okay. And five polling stations uh, for which the counting is to be done. They are randomly selected by draw of lots. This is the procedure. So second statement is incorrect. So our answer is option A. Now come to our next question which is based on this news article. Context of this news is that international team of scientists including India, they have discovered strong evidence indicating the presence of ozone on Jupiter's moon that is Callisto. Okay, this is the Jupiter's moon that is Callisto. You can see image here. Now, why it is a, a remarkable discovery? First, you should know about ozone. Ozone. See, ozone is a, it composed of three oxygen atoms bonded together. Okay. And ozone layer is found in the lower part of the Earth's stratosphere that is around uh, 15 to 35 kilometer. And this layer, ozone layer is quite important because it works as a shield and uh, it completely absorbs UV rays, UV uh, ultraviolet rays B and C because these can increase the risk of cancer in human beings, skin cancer in human beings. And uh, why? Ozone is fundamental because it requires for the formation of complex molecules that support life, okay, such as amino acid. So, this is quite fundamental for those complex molecules that can support life, okay. That is why this discovery is quite remarkable. And UPSC has been asking question on a uh, uh, advancement in space technology as well as in space this question came uh, regarding objects in space in year 2023 so here we have taken a practice question based on jupiter's moon callisto okay for that let's see some important information about jupiter's moon callisto so it is one of the jupiter's largest moon but third largest moon in solar system first is Ganymede, which is another Jupiter's moon, here you can see. Then second is Titan, that is Saturn's moon, okay. This moon is primarily composed of water, ice, rocky materials, sulfur dioxide and some organic compounds. So, uh, these substances make moon a potential candidate for supporting life in the solar system beyond Earth, okay. Then the surface is heavily cratered, that means long history of being struck by asteroids and comets. Another important fact is that it lacks the extensive seismic activity which is there in another moon of Jupiter that is Europa. And because of uh, this uh, less extensive seismic, uh, seismic activity, its surface, it relatively, uh, there is relatively few ge uh, geological features because of less seismic activity okay and now let's solve our practice question so the first is here we need to find out the correct statement so callisto is the largest moon in our solar system no first is uh, ganymede that is of jupiter then second is titan and callisto is the third one so our first statement is incorrect Callisto is primarily uh, composed of methane and carbon dioxide. No, it composed of water, ice, sulfur dioxide, rocky material uh, having a potential to support life. So again, this statement is incorrect. Third, it is uh, Callisto is geographically, geologically inactive and lacks extensive seismic activity. This statement is correct. So our op answer is option A, that is only one. Now come to our next question, which is based on this news article that appeared on page number 7 in the business line. 
context is that central government they have a plan to raise the area under mustard from the current that is 4 lakh hectare and yield from 8 quintal per hectare to help achieve a bigger role or that is larger objective of self-sufficiency in edible oils. That is the sole purpose to scale up mustard output. UPSC has been asking question on important crops. This question came based on uh, cultivation of karak crop in year 2019. So we have taken a practice question based on mustard cultivation. Before that, Let's see some facts with respect to mustard and rapeseed. See, these uh, uh, rapeseed and mustard, they comprise of several oil seeds like rye, sarso, toria, etc. And they require cool and dry weather and fair supply of soil moisture okay, during their growing season. Plus dry, clear weather during their maturity time. That means they are subtropical crop cultivated during Rabi season in northwestern and central part of India. Rabi season means season from September October. Let me write it here for you. September October to February and March. Now these oil seeds, they do not tolerate water logging condition. So they thrive well in light loam soil. Okay. Because they do not uh, stand or uh, tolerate water logging condition. So this is the best soil for them to thrive. Another important fact is that two third of the cultivated area under these crop is irrigated. Okay. And these oil seeds together, they occupy only 2.5 of total cropped area in India. Major cultivating states, Rajasthan, about one third production, following by Haryana and Madhya Pradesh. But if you consider yield wise, then it is comparatively high in Haryana and Rajasthan in comparison to Madhya Pradesh. So these are the major cultivating states. Now let's solve our question. Here again we have to find out the correct statements and we have given three statements to you. So the first statement is that these crops are cultivated during Kharif season in northwestern and central part of India. No. Uh, they uh, require cool and dry weather during growing season. So these crops are cultivated during Rabi season, not Kharif. So this makes our first statement incorrect. About two-third of the cultivated area under these crop is rain-fed. Again, wrong. It is irrigated. Okay. And the last statement is that these oil seeds together occupy only 2.5% of total cropped area. This statement is correct. So, first statement is incorrect. Second statement is incorrect. And third statement is correct. So, our answer is option A. Now, let's come to our last question, which is based on this news article which appeared on page number one in the business line and the context is that Indian defense exports reached all-time high level that is 21,000 crore in financial year 2023 and 24 with a growth of 32.5 percent in financial year 2024 if you compare with previous financial years. Now UPSC has been asking question uh, with respect to defense. Uh, whether it is uh, defense technology or facts with respect to uh, defense. So here, there was a question on Agni 4 which came in year 2014. So here, we have curated a practice question based on defense trade of India. So before that, let's see some facts about defense export scenario. So according to uh, Ministry of Defense report, India is manu uh, exporting locally manufactured defense product to over 85 countries. Okay. And uh, majorly done by private sector, that is 60%, then 40% by DPSUs. And if you see 
comparative if you compare with two decades data that is uh, 2004 5 to 2013-14 and 2014 and 15 to 2023-24 if you compare these two decades data then you can see that there has been a growth of 21 times in the defense exports okay so our defense exports increasing now majorly what we are exporting we are exporting akash missile dornier aircraft advanced light helicopters brahmos supersonic missiles etc and if you go with uh, the pre pact that is uh, stockholm international peace research institute uh, report it is a swedish think tank india was the world's top arm importer importer for the period of 2019 and 23 with import having goes up by 4.47% compared to the previous period so we are the world's top arms importer according to cipri and according to cipri france is now the second largest arm supplier to india okay so first arm supplier is russia second arm supplier to india is france now let's solve our practice question here you have to find out the correct statements so india is world largest importer of arms yes according to cipri fact france is largest exporter of arms to india no largest exporter is russia and france is second so this makes our second statement incorrect third statement is india's main item of export is agni 5 missile system no third statement is incorrect so our answer is option a that is only one so if you uh, that's all for today if you have any doubt with respect to main topic or prelims topic please drop your doubt in our comment box and that's all stay tuned for more such updates thank you